plane and farming very aggressively and the supports putting pressure on towers looking for glimpse grabs um it's gonna be a really good game can't wait to see what happens for sure. I'm interested to see, too, the way, you know, we do have that in power that Sub will be able to place over on Sumail. I'm interested to see how OG decide to play this, right? Because there's two ways of running this. You can have them just have Sumail off on the side doing his own thing and then have the rest of the team moving to create that movement. Or do you play nearby and you have him join in early? That's a good question, especially for OG historically. When Ana rejoined them for DPC Season 2, the play near them thing was absolutely what they did. <laughs> they, they stuck together very often. And looking for uh, kills and just to rotate over, drop a healing ward, walk over, do a spin, then go back to farming. He might end up playing near them a lot, but the fact that he has a Magnus makes me assume, like he's going to want to stay near Seb to get him power once in a while, of course, but makes me assume he's going to hit creeps a little bit more abundantly, sure especially because he's move, effective if he can spin first. It. Voice lines have begun. It seems like everyone's very excited. We get to have fun dropped by Crit. No tail was just the birthday boy as well the other day, so mm. he's got to be feeling very excited. That's first TI with birthdays, right? Uh, I can relate to that a bit because uh, my birthday's in August, so it's like every, almost most years during TI, it's like my birthday flaps in there somewhere. Oh, really? But now that everything's different, it's like they get this new special birthday experience. The TI birthday experience. Scrimming all day, watching replays, <laughs> practicing, eating food that you're not used to. The best birthday you can have. I mean, let's be fair. A lot of these guys, a good birthday for them is scrimming, staying in the room, playing, you know, maybe getting food that's a that's little true. bit more. Winning, winning your scrims, that's the best day, right? That is. That is. You're feeling good when you win that game. When you see also, like, you know, just queuing in general, see that whole line of green? Feels damn good. It does. Winning is everything. All right, positioned right now just to maybe spot lanes. They're going to spot Kray with this Observer Ward, so they can maybe anticipate where they're going to start, but... Everything looks normal on the EG side. Everything normal on the OG side. A little pressure, though. A little bit of pressure over onto Ice Ice Ice. Doesn't seem too concerned, but No-Tail making use of that battery assault. Getting a couple wax in. <laughs> that was definitely worth it. Gush back here. Crit's maybe going to give him a little zap on the way. A couple slaps, but good harass for Clockwork to start things off. All right. Getting, trying to get into Arteezy's mind right here, I think. Yeah, right. Have all, that must be so strange. Yeah. Absolutely strange to have that in there and just be like, oh, man. Do you know what it translates emote? to? I, uh... No idea, but I see that winky emote they're using with it. So you think it's sassy? Got yes. it. All right, so we have uh, the matchup of Thompson and Abed, of course, here in this middle lane. That should be doing just fine. Uh, the, in the side lane, it looks like Ice is sitting down. so very low already. That was uh, No Tail running and going for the battery salting. He's doing a great job harassing Ice. Um, they don't actually don't have a salve on crit. They spotted this earlier, I think, with the Observer Ward. Maybe this is why no -Tail went for that early trade, because he's having a tango up. It's hurting him a lot. Arteezy taking a lot of damage early on. Socks also sitting a bit low. Seb has uh, already started those mind games. He's thrown out the high five. Another gush bottom on No-Tail. Gush bottom. Crit trying to run away here. We'll throw out a couple more slaps. No-Tail sitting very low. This is really good what No-Tail's done, though, because he's gotten their HP so low that now Sumail's spin is actually a big threat. Because that's why Ice Ice has to play safe. Ice Ice just getting his second last hit. Sumail's at a massive five. I don't think they're going to be able to recover from this advantage. <laughs> ah, that makes sense. I was wondering. I saw that he was sitting low. I figured he probably wants a free trip back to the Fallon at yeah. this point. No health, no mana left. Not really going to be able to assist too, too much. <laughs> yep. It's very important he gets on the map. More regen this way uh, that he'll be able to bring back here. Crit doing his best to deny Sumail, but only able to get some. But so far, everything looking all right for both teams. Socks are going to pull a creep wave behind because they don't want to contest against Monkey King. That makes sense. That's like the one lane that EG has a pretty decent advantage in. Monkey King versus any melee hero is not going to feel nice. So being able to separate him is great. Socks is going to be able to deny this creep wave, though. And in fact, Fly didn't head over for this. So this is going to be a, a big experience uh, advantage for the starting lane for OG here. But they're doing the same thing. So they're also going to deny creep wave of experience because they pulled the wave. So they'll go even here. Both, pe both teams happy. It's a lot of scrapping early on here. No first blood just yet. But you can tell that they definitely mean business, especially no tail, just continuously trying to just interrupt anything going on over on the side between crit and ice, ice, ice. Thompson might be going for a kill in the mid lane pretty soon here. Abed's kind of low here. He did just use his acorn shot, just trying to keep his health in a, in a really low point. But the fact that Thompson's full regen and Abed is not, it's going to make it hard for Abed to keep getting last hits. Uh oh, no tail. No tail is going to be the first blood. Ice 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 has had enough of this little robot. 
And it's gonna take him out of the lane, so he's gone back to the fountain for the second time. Not, uh, not this time of his own choosing. It's a tough one. Uh, Clockwork does a lot of damage, but he's not the most survivable. Just some good raw HP on him. And Shaman has a lot of damage with his right click, so having to worry about Gush is a big problem. But on the bright side, it's not necessarily massively furthering exercise. He's fairing out mangoes and things like that just to make his laning stage good right now. And that's kind of what he has to do. I'm surprised that we're not, I guess you kind of need to stay in the lane for now, but uh, would like to see, you know, some of these stacks being made for Ice Ice Ice, just because he has been having a little difficulty in this lane from the amount of harass being dished out to him. Uh, I think Sumail just glyphed just to deny a range creep right there. That's how much he cares about little <laughs> margins. So I'm watching him go for this last hit that he wanted so bad, and he, he glyphed it right before Ice got it. Gets the deny. There's the spin damage coming in. The No-Tail trying to get into position. Has a battery assault on Chris Mill. Moving back, though. Gonna continue with these hits. This is great. Really good damage. Oh, this is a little bit spooky right now for Crit. He's gonna go hold up the shackles, but so they've got it. the healing ward up and running. Because Crit didn't have any more regen, actually. He just brought himself a win lace. So now he's half HP. He's got a nice wand, of course, and there's a ring of health on Tide, but they're again kind of winning the regen battle in this little trade of dual lanes. So <laughs> it's going fine for them. 20 last hits now on Sumail, 16 on Tide. Some small marginal advantages, but it's it's a big deal in, in some of these matches. It just continues to be the pulling of the wave in that top area. Bottom lane, though, no tail again with the battery assault. Sumail clicking away, does have the spin, trying to get enough damage over onto Ooh, Ice, 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 but still not able to go. Oh, there it is. There's the cogs. This is a very dead tide hunter. And that's going to go over to no tail. <laughs> it was close. <laughs> he almost jukes the spin there, but they're able to catch up with the battery assault, get the great cogs with both of them stuck inside, so Ice goes down. 1K advantage to OG right now, which is pretty severe. It might be on that edge, so maybe. Maybe it looks a little bit more extreme than normal, but good start for them in this lane. It's been a pretty quiet time over in this mid lane, though. Everyone just busy working on getting their levels, getting their last hits. Right now, we're looking at Topson 27 and 9, and Voker Abed 20 and 5. So it's fairly even. I'm interested, though, to see is. Are we going to see a situation? Oh, Fly's Courier gets it's sniped here. Are we going to see, you know, these rotations coming up fairly early, do you think? Or is uh, it going to just be the Invoker just sticks in the lane the entire time and Hoodwing tries to, they try to send someone over for like a gank? Yeah, a lot of the games we've watched recently, there hasn't been too many rotations, but this is a good game for it, I think. Um, another spin going on Isis Ice in the bot lane. Just, uh, it's a level three actually, so pretty good amount of damage here. No Tail's going to change it up. It misses his cogs, unfortunately, but hey, Back to ice, more damage. It's burning off some of it. They'll turn around with a shackle. Ice, 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 though. We'll back off as Mill is there with the healing ward yet again. A little mana expensive. You do want to force Jug to do this multiple times. That's less spin mana for later, but they're going to be A-OK. -okay. Thompson. Thompson clinking away over at Fly. He'll throw out the kinetic, but has a bushwhack. Needs a couple more clicks to do it. Throws out the acorn. So has the vision socks coming in, and that's a dead fly. Eight is three, dude. Oh, in the bottom lane, Ice 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 gets caught in the cogs yet again. Email collecting the kill this time. They are just pressure in here. Really nicely done by OG so far. That's going to be an EP that does land on Thompson, but spends his mana right before it gets burned away anyways, and he's doing just fine. But the Ooh, rotate. the rotation here from Crit. He's got the shackle. They even bring the disruptor to make sure that this little squirrel gets kept in the cage. Nicely done. Great rotation. Two points in Hex there for Crit, and a really solid gank. That's Zep. Top That's the rotation value from these supports, basically. Disruptor's not the best at rotating, but obviously Shaman is excellent. Great base damage, good disables, and he's able to get there and put wards oh, down on the long way, too. He's just a little bit too fast here, but you know who's nearby? It's Arteezy. <laughs> and he says, I will uh, I will take that, although it still goes over to fly. We do have some nice stacks being built, though, over here on the side of OG, which they're very aware of. Those are good ones. It's a fat stack there. Uh, I guess Jug's going to kill with Empower. That's the goal. Um, he's going to go for a Yasha build. You can get away with this when you've got an Empower. Uh, an Empower offlaner. Another spin for Harass on Ice 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 just to lower him down. But he's got Hood now. The instant Hood Rush to lower or lower the, the spin damage that Jug can deal. So otherwise, he just gets zoned too easily. It's like a little bit of mana, a wand here and there. And he just has to play defensive, not good as much farm. But 
He is struggling. 24 last sits now compared to Smills 46. The jug really paying off here with the clockwork as well. Oh, and there's the Omni Slash bottom too, but it jumps to the neutrals. Oh, a little unfortunate. Unfortunate for Smell. Ice, ice, ice though is still climbing away, and we do have another whole little fight going on. Asoxa is trying to run out here. Nice boundless landing coming out from Arteezy. I'm not sure they're going to continue to follow though. And this is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see now that Fly has noticed that they have all these stacks. I would almost like to see them maybe rotate up the Tide Hunter. Not maybe not just yet, yeah. but definitely take it together because he's having some difficulties in that lane. And these are some bad stacks, like you said. That's the problem, though, is that Tide's like the only guy that can take it. But it's look at his skill build. He's got three points in Kraken Shell because his lane is so hard. Mm -hmm. He they can't easily do this. So yeah, Seb's gonna take it himself with help from Thompson. They both have Empower, but they're just trying to get this cleaned up off the map. Get the gold, get the experience, and more, more importantly, this, the this, neutral, the neutral items. items. Getting them all in that first like minute period after they spawn is a nice advantage. I always like the uh, neutral item pinata when you take a camp that's been stacked a couple times uh -huh. and they all just pop out all at once. It's a very satisfying experience. It is really, because yeah, it's basically like giving everybody on your team like a bracer worth of net worth. At the start of the game, and sometimes it's even more powerful. It's regen, it's mana regen. Those kinds of things um, end up me meaning you don't have to spy consumables anymore, that kind of thing. Thompson again getting his mana drained here due to an EMP, but uh, No Tail being a little aggressive. Dire team scanning. They know that No Tail headed over here. They just don't know exactly where they have going. great wards. If you look over in that middle lane there, you can see that they've got the back of the tower covered and they've got the front area. So any sort of movement coming out from the side of OG, EG is very, very in the know about it. And that could have been just because they're worried about no tails rotations most likely because that's going to spot rotations between the mid lane and the bot lane maybe so topson and no tail both covered with these uh this galot of wards they have put down but still a small gold advantage for og but it's not blowing up wide so everything's fine for them right now uh jug's gonna be pressuring top tower by himself though maybe we'll see eg rotate now that they see some heroes on the map but for now yeah rt's is gonna rotate and defend that now now that he knows the supports aren't there so wards paying off for for eg see some more movement though they want to try to secure this bottom tower on the side of eg take away some of this advantage and they can see seb is digging further and further into the tree line with the skewer there's so many heroes from eg though this is not looking good from fact they're all here and they all want to just get rid of seb not much he can do about that one he could have skewered and tried tp'ing but like invokers there's too much good chance he tornadoes that anyway so they're still gonna play in the area though but yeah, Sox is kind of ditching now. No tails also. High tailing it out of there. Fly though. He's gonna get held into place. Abed with the follow-up. Looks like they'll maybe get the kill. Yeah, they'll be able to get the kill nice. on Fly. So nice quick little pick off. Of course, he's gonna walk right into ice, ice, ice. So it's gonna be a little bit of a trade Ops here. And a splitter going through the sharpshooter. The follow-up with the Ravage. <laughs> Abed running for his life from Cement. Does have the oh Omni Slash, God, the but they're damage. just chasing after Ice Ice Ice. Sox will collect that kill. Dude, those punches from Elder Titan were beefy. It's got three points in Astral Spirit here. You can even tell that's a tanky hero normally on the Tide. It's got damage block, but who cares? He's probably hitting for like 150. You're blocking 40 of it. And they, they end up not defending the tower, but they got a bunch of really crucial kills. I mean, No-Tail traded his life for the five. That gets him more levels, gets him to six a bit faster. It's delayed slightly, but he's catching up. Topson gets a kill as well on crit. And then they also, Ravage gets burned. I mean, that's three great pickoffs. Yeah, this opens it up a bit more here for the side of OG. Now taking a bit of Harassal has the Omni. They do want to protect this mid tower, though. It's very important for that Roche advantage. They already lost the top tower. Samael was allowed to just kind of do his own thing while they were making moves below. But we do get a smoke coming out for the side of EG. Great network on those two right now. The uh, the Topson's uh, Hoodwink and uh, Sumail's Jug both sitting equal net worth. So even though um, Monkey King basically won his lane, it just felt like to me like he spent so much time running around playing behind the tier one tower that maybe he just got less last hits. Oh, the immediate spot caught. though. This is a little squirrel that perhaps has spent too much time hiding over into the tree line because EG knew exactly where she was. Yeah, they anticipated that one basically. Um, and they guessed or assumed somebody would be playing that area. Thompson was hoping to get a cheeky solo pickup on Arteezy, which would have been massively game impacting, but instead he's going to end up dying and giving Monkey a big net worth jump. Now they're equal in net worth, so kind of a big mistake by Thompson, but excellent punish by EG. I feel like this is textbook EG right now, the way that they're moving, the way that they're trying to gain control of the map. 
Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Full control of the jungle area after you've taken the safe lane tier one. You keep one core, ideally the tanky guy near mid tower, because he's the hardest to dive and kill. So he should be safe to make sure they don't get to tower pressure. And now this just opens up a lot of area on the map for them. Surprisingly, uh, Sumail, I assume maybe he would play opposite side of the map as well to be safe, but maybe they feel like it's too much pressure. Really going right for this pressure here, Thompson with the bushwhack. Hunts himself a monkey. Ooh, the hook shot. Not, uh, not going there. A little too short. Could have been an okay grab there. Uh, Thompson gets to follow up on that, but fortunately they miss it. Um, not even that much damage dealt to the tower, to be honest. They glyphed it. I thought it was going to be fine against the wards, but once the next creep wave came, ends up not doing much. But I, I don't really blame Crit for going for that, because he's got Arcane Boots, so he had the mana. And it's not like they were going to get a great opportunity to drop the wards mid. So better to, like, force some rotations and get a little bit done here. But they're smoking. They're going to try to kill Thompson here. Easy. Throwing out the Boundless. There is that gank at the other part, though. Thompson, they drop the Static Storm. And they'll get themselves a kill on Thompson, and in the top lane, Samail will find himself a kill on Crit. Soxa getting the final hit on RTZ. <laughs> All right, pretty good for him. Lose Thompson, but they get two kills, so yeah. they'll be really happy with that, putting it on Jug. Thompson again, very happy to self-sacrifice, and despite these two deaths now for him, his net worth is still looking really good because his team has also done the right thing and ganked the, ganked the monkey. So his goes down, monkey goes down, Jug goes up, and with him power, it's only going to get better as the game continues. Indeed, it is. The fortification has been used in the mid. That's the reveal of the blink over on Ice Ice Ice. The shove back. He's going to try to gain some of this damage, of course, using that hood. But it's going to be just too much and overwhelm him. And they're not set up, so they get an easy grab due to the skewer back. Blink finished for Seb, and that's the power of Magnus. Just pulls people out of position, and now the pressure continues. Diffusal Blade's finished for Jug. He's queuing up Manta. He's already got 900 gold towards the last two pieces, so his trajectory is sitting so good here. He's not being greedy at all. He's not just skilling stats. That's in some ways not greedy, I guess. What he's doing is slightly <laughs> greedy, but he's so far ahead in net worth, he absolutely just wants to get maximum damage here. Doesn't care as much about slight HP increase. It definitely feels like the way that OG is playing. Uh, you know, I asked that question earlier. Are they going to be, like, sticking together and just, you know, having all these, like, kind of scraps, or are they going to just send Smail off by himself? And it feels like Smail's been very active so far. He has, yeah. Um, he's been farming a lot, but now his team's rotating to him to fight, and mm -hmm. EG's just been waiting for, for Thompson to show in the bot lane again. This is, like, 30 seconds for both of them. Oh, he's going to spot him, though. Yeah, they just go. Drag him right back. Stop wave. And it's a quick and easy kill. Yeah, and that's what EG wants. That's why Fly started moving there, because he was trying to anticipate a gank that would come over and possibly counter him. He gets killed, Obit's fine. That's exactly the move they want to make. But for once, Thompson uh, read their play effectively and doesn't go in the danger zone. So and now the gank goes on the other side of the map. If you, if they were bottom, they're probably TPing away. And now he's going to run into crit. Oh, definitely sees crit already throwing out the hex. Got the sharpshooter in place. That combo is going to do so much damage because Natural Order is going to lower their magic resistance even further. So it's like this this nuke that already is monster magic damage is going to be even higher. Can't get a disruption fight here. But you're but. like, look at the positioning of Smail and everybody else. They're sitting so far back. Yeah. They're just letting him, you know, be the brave guy up front. He's got the Aegis, oh, the Hex, of course, right forward again. But he'll get a shackle. Crit just lets go. He's like, well, guys, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do here. I need nope. someone else to come in with me. I need the rest of the team because we don't want to just blow some of these big team big fight, team ultimates, fight yeah. ultimates on just some mail. Again, who has that Aegis? They're just literally watching him. Oh, they got apart the base. On the Blind. side, the side. Oh, that's just a very dead disruptor. Smail seeing this opening now, going to start rolling around or over onto crit. The hex comes out, ice, 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 trying to get into position. Zeb going in for the RP, but it's a beautiful tornado. Crit. Oh, they'll take down RTZ. Ice, ice, ice. Now having to move away. Zeb sitting a bit low, no tail throwing out the cogs. They have the Gleep Nair over on the two supports on the side of OG. What an advantage now, and with some buybacks as well, the net worth goes insane. 12k advantage for OG at this point in the game. It's so difficult for EG to initiate on them, but with Thompson getting that pickoff, now the rest of the game is looking pretty straightforward. OG's not going to stop. They've got two whole minutes left on this Aegis. Getting just, Aegis and then opening this up just completely changed the game. They haven't been able to touch some mail. 
You saw, like, Crit, at one point he gets the shackle off and then it just throws his hands up in the air like, well, guys, what am I supposed to do? I can't do anything else. They have a 98% win rate percent. Hope. Oh, gosh, right into the back lines, right onto Crit. They know that he is a big part of that. They'll follow up with the Ravage, but where's the rest of the damage? Where's the rest of the team? Arteezy joining back in, does get the kill on No-Tail, follow up with the Boundless. They've already got Socks and just running after oh him. Look at that God. damage! Oh my god, there was an RTZ there, but the uh, that act, they, they just give up. I, I'm not surprised. I mean, he had to get BKB because they've got to take this fight. But they've got an Elder Titan that's got Ags. He's got four points in natural order. So Monkey King walks in, zero armor. It does not matter that you have lifesteal if you do not have any armor because you're never going to win that trade. You're never going to be able to 